stupid. Hi guys, welcome to Stefan Eats. And uh, yeah, it looks like we are back in Vancouver. Wow, super excited to be back. Uh, one thing I'm not excited about though, it's uh, going back to this old cameraman over here. It's terrible. So, what have I missed? Uh, I don't know. Let's go explore some of the newer restaurants in Vancouver, some of the cool new concepts. We are here in Burnaby. We're going to go around the corner, and I think everybody's heard about this uh, place. Let's go try some tempura tendon kohaku. Heard some pretty cool things about this spot, and they, yeah, they just specialize in tempura. Let's go over there and try it out. So, look at this, absolutely beautiful. It all came out at the same time, and I think we're gonna start with the time-sensitive item. So it's going to be, I think, let's go with this one first. This one is absolutely ridiculous. This is, the, I think, their signature dish. I think it's called the Anago? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I'm gonna put the name down there because I don't have the menu on me anymore. Uh, but I think it has a big piece of eel, it has some fish, it has some uh, shrimp, and uh, I think some other vegetables. I'm not quite sure exactly what's going on here. So I'm just gonna kind of taste test around this. Uh, miso soup is here. <laughs> Get that out of the way. Okay, so <laughs> let's go. And <laughs> first of all, Look, what is this? <laughs> wow, it's like a whole fish. Look at this, <laughs> so good. Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna break this in two, cause you know, cameraman does have to eat. Oh, this is the eel, yes. Look at that, look at the interior. Oh, perfect. All right, let's start off straight up just with this. Bare hands, savage mode. Oh wow, the big thing there, yeah, it's so tender, so it's a little bit spicy, uh, it's fairly crispy, there's a sauce on there, so it is a little bit uh, softer, uh, just because uh, there's some sauce sprinkled on there, and I think the sauce is a little bit sweet, but that eel is just so tender, kind of melty. What I really noticed too is just the kind of cleanness of the batter. A lot of places that make tempura, the oil probably isn't that new. I think this one, they changed the oil and they make a big deal about the oil and you can taste it just by the clean, uh, fresh uh, taste and just so neutral. Let's grab a little bit of that shrimp. Oh, look at that, yes, perfect. Yeah, this is a shrimp right there. Probably maybe one of my favorite things to tempura. Uh, yeah, call me basic, but you know, <laughs> shrimp tempura, always gonna be delicious. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Once again, fairly crispy. Uh, you get that kind of veiny uh, muscliness uh, from the shrimp. Again, I like that kind of spiciness. Just a small hint of spice uh, coming through there. And I think you get beans, you get, look at that egg. <gasps> oh, the egg. Oh, okay, wait. <laughs> I was gonna give this to David, but not quite yet because I think we have to do an egg break here, don't we? There you go. Oh, <laughs> it's a temperate egg. Oh, yes. Oh, put that over everything. Oh, and you know what? I'm gonna put the shrimp into the egg. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> if that isn't decadence, I don't know what is. That looks absolutely amazing. Just soaked in that epic egg. I didn't know you could do that to an egg. That's that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Just that lusciousness from the egg just coming through the crispiness. Oh, so good. Mm. Okay, this one is so cool. This one is literally just shrimp. And I'm gonna take this off with a giant, I think, piece of pumpkin. Yeah, big piece of pumpkin. You get some uh, shrimp in there, and then what's really cool is you get a little bit of uh, of uh, raw or fresh seafood. And I think I'm gonna go right into the seafood <laughs> because, yeah, why not? I think I said some scallop, maybe some salmon. Mm. Super fresh, super delicious, and then maybe with this giant pumpkin here. Oh yeah, that is perfectly cooked. Mm. Sometimes when you get pumpkin, it can, uh, you know, some people don't cook it enough, so it's a little bit wrong. This one's perfectly cooked, super mushy. Oh wow, but not too mushy. Yeah, it retains this texture. The only thing I would say is maybe it needs like a bit of sauce to kind of dip into. Uh, maybe with the ginger, it'll actually work pretty well. A bit of ginger on there. Mm. 
Oh yeah, that's what it needs. That's really good. Comes a little bit of wasabi too. So you kind of dip your salmon into the wasabi. Yeah. Mmm. Really good. And kind of like a cool combination too. These are eggs. I think they're marinated. And then uh, there's some ikura, some salmon. Uh, I think some salmon eggs on top. I will put the name obviously in the description. Yeah, there you go. Get a little bit of that sauce in there. It almost looks like a ramen uh, style egg. Epically creamy. You get a bit of sweetness uh, from the broth at the bottom. Those little pups uh, from the salmon. That's pretty good too. Yeah, and I love the cooking on the egg. Just absolutely perfect. Ace Tempura. Seafood detective. <laughs> you know, Ace Ventura, Ace Tempura. That's seafood detective. <laughs> Looking pretty cool. Okay, anyways. Next uh, spot, another new restaurant, Land and Sea. It looks like they're kind of fusing uh, West Coast food with uh, kind of some Japanese influence. Uh, so yeah, really cool. A little on the higher end, uh, we've taken a reservation. That's what I would recommend because it looks uh, fairly full. I saw a couple dishes that looked pretty epic. So uh, let's go in there and uh, try some of this food out. dish has shown up and look how beautiful this is absolutely amazing so you have some king salmon probably one of my favorite salmons out there in the Pacific with some creamy soba uh, you have some uh, salmon ikora on top and I think there's some uh, yuzu not tobiko if I'm not quite uh, yeah I think it's yuzu tobiko first of all let's go right into this king salmon right here uh, look at that look at the way it just flakes apart all oh, the cooking look at the absolute tenderness look at the juiciness on that salmon there I'm gonna put a little bit of this ikura on top no oh, I'm gonna try the salmon just by itself so good so buttery so creamy the salmon is cooked absolutely perfectly for me king salmon is the perfect salmon it's kind of like a mix between the butteriness of uh, of a really delicious uh, kind of more Atlantic salmon uh, mixed with the kind of uh, kind of darker flavor of sockeye that's one of the best king salmons I've had ever okay let's try the soba on the bottom and look at this oh soba one of my favorite noodles of all time the creamy soba Absolutely surprised. So in the middle of that soba bite, which was absolutely delicious, uh, we got this epic Negroni. So Negroni is a kind of Italian drink uh, with some bitters, some orange flavor. And yeah, when you took it out, you just smell the smoke. Uh, oh, and such a beautiful smell too. Wow, absolutely amazing. Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of a break from the soba and try this out, because it just smells absolutely ridiculous. And look, it's still smoking. Look at that. <laughs> so cool. Oh, it smells like a campfire. Wow. More of like a sensory overload when you get that smoke and it kind of translates into your mouth when you uh, drink the Negroni. The Negroni is a little bit kind of uh, bitter and a little bit of that sweetness in there and the presentation is just so cool. Okay, let's get back to this soba here and a little bit of that salmon to go with it. Oh, look at that. Both together. You gotta get this dish. It's stunning. It's so good. The soba is so fresh. Has a nice little bite to it. Uh, it's actually a cold soba, so it's a cold soba salad. A little bit of creaminess. Uh, just epic little kind of eggs on there too. Uh, a little bit of that citrusiness from the yuzu. This dish might make it into the top 10 dishes of 2021. Once again, just 
thank you so much to Land and Sea for just, I think they're hooking us up quite a bit. This is actually not something we ordered, but they just gave us some sable fish, which looks absolutely amazing. So sable fish uh, with some egg tofu on the bottom, uh, beautiful sable fish here, some broccolini it looks like, and I think he just poured a tomato consomme on top. Uh, looks like some mushrooms too, but yeah, it's all about that sable fish. Look how absolutely tender that is. Oh wow, absolutely amazing. Oh, look at the tenderness. Oh, it just flakes apart. Yes, awesome. Okay, let's try the sable fish by itself. There's a bit of sweetness coming from there. Sable fish is probably one of my favorite dishes. Absolutely epic, so delicious, so melty. And then, I'm gonna try a bit of this egg tofu too. Oh yeah, the egg tofu is so kind of creamy, almost like a custard. And then that uh, tomato broth is not too strong, a little bit mild, uh, and yeah, what I really love it doesn't really overpower any of the seafood so you still taste all the seafood and that tomato this adds a beautiful kind of sweet uh, blistered hint let's go on to the next one so here this is absolutely epic i maybe the king salmon and this dish kind of forced me to come here chili crab kind of based off of the singapore uh, dish obviously uh, chili crab being very famous in singapore uh, but this kind of put in a ravioli form stuffed to it i think it's king crab and snow crab. Now on top of that there's some rock crab, uh, crispy, I think it's just crispy rock crab, and then the black tobacco on top. And yeah, I'm gonna try the ravioli first. So the ravioli right here. Oh, look at this. I don't have to say anything already. I know this is gonna be pretty damn good. Oh, where do I start? First of all, that sauce is absolutely epic. A little bit of sweetness, a little bit of spiciness. You can taste the chili. It doesn't overpower the crab. And then just fluffy, tender crab. That's all it is inside. Uh, no other filler. I will happily open my full wallet and shake whatever is inside. Whatever comes out, I will happily pay for this dish. And then look at that rock crab. It's so crispy. Look at that. Oh, yes. Let's take a bite of the rock crab too. Oh, it's nice and airy, crispy. You can just bite right through that shell and then oh, just an epic kind of seafoodiness at the end. And you get that tobacco on top too. Get this dish for sure. That is that is epic. This is a unagi uh, risotto. So look at that unagi. The eel, you have the soft, uh, the super epic egg over here. Oh, just break it apart on top of that epic risotto. You have more ikura. So more of the, uh, yeah, more of these salmon uh, eggs. And then we're gonna try a little bit of that risotto to start, oh, the steam coming out of it too. Yes, and you know what, let's go. Let's go right for the eel, barbecued eel, one of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> so decadent, so good, wow. All right, first of all, let's start with the eel. How amazing that is, just beautifully tender, so buttery, that glaze on there. So you get the kind of sweet, uh, slightly charred glaze, and then just so tender, so melt in your mouth. Risotto is so good. Uh, the I love the texture of the rice. Uh, the egg just adds an extra layer of creaminess, and yeah, the rice is kind of al dente a little bit. Seafoody, al dente, creamy, so well done. Let's move on to the duck. I mean, there's some mushrooms on the bottom. This is a, um, I think it's a squash croquette. And then a bit of the sauce on the bottom. I'm gonna do a little bit of the duck on the side. And the duck just looks so epically cooked. Look at that, all oh, the crispy skin too. Oh, yes, perfect. Let's dip it in a bit of that sauce. And we're gonna do the duck to uh, start. Oh. What I love about that is very tender. That skin is so perfectly rendered. It's absolutely amazing. The sauce, not too sweet. There's a little bit of like a citrusiness coming from it. I can't quite describe it. And then the croquette. Oh, look at that croquette too. I'm gonna put a little bit of mushroom on there. And this looks like an oyster mushroom. 
Oh, that croquette is very sweet, very crispy, not too greasy, and then that mushroom kind of counterbalances with the earthiness. Let's try the combination bite. When you mix those together, that's where it really comes together harmoniously. Because of the sweetness of that croquette, uh, that's really kind of a classic combination for duck because you do need some sweetness with the duck. Another winner, uh, favorite dishes here, the king salmon, the risotto, and the uh, chili crab. So happy we came here. I was almost not gonna come here because you know, it's a little bit higher end on the price, but wow, it's worth the price 100%. Very happy here. Anyways, next spot, uh, pretty new. I think it's been here for a couple of months too. Kind of a Mexican food, but a little bit elevated. Some really unique dishes that you don't really see in other uh, Mexican restaurants in Vancouver. So excited to try some of those out. First dish has come up, and this is one of the unique dishes that I really wanted to try. This is a flauta, but uh, the really unique thing about this is they're uh, making it uh, with a duck interior. Uh, so I think it looks like just mostly uh, kind of kofi duck uh, on top. I think there's supposed to be some squash somewhere. Uh, now flautas, what they do is normally they have the tortilla, then they roll uh, whatever the filling is, and then I think they deep fry the whole thing, if I'm not mistaken. I could be a little bit wrong. What's really cool is they have a sauce on there that's called Recado Negro, and uh, what it is is kind of like a darker sauce. That darker coloration actually comes from the uh, roasted chilies. Let's try it before more dishes come because that was an epic distraction. Oh god, that looks so good. Ah, okay. Let's try to let's try to ignore that for a little bit. So duck flauta. Let's see if I can just pick it up with my hand. And there you go. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna put it on this plate here. Here you go. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut it in half just to see what it looks like. Maybe a bit of ASMR. You never know. Oh, yes. Perfect. Oh, oh, interesting. So. Look at the inside. There's a squash in there too. Yeah, so I think there's, um, first of all on this side here, there's some duck. Uh, so I'll show you. Yeah, there's the duck right here. And then I think there's a squash. <laughs> so uh, the middle is a squash. Mmm, you know what I really taste? It's that kind of crispy tortilla. The squash is uh, fairly uh, neutral. Yeah, not much of a taste. Uh, but then I'm gonna try this duck side here too. Mm. Nice duck flavor. I think the duck's a little bit confit, a little bit crispy. But then what I really like is that kind of crispy shell. I really like that sauce. Actually, I wish there was more of that sauce. I think if you added just much more of that sauce, it would just be so delicious. Cazuela actually is a dish kind of, uh, it's like a stew. And uh, the name actually is given to a lot of stews uh, kind of spread from South America. So I think there's Ecuadorian cazuelas, there's uh, Chilean cazuelas. Uh, this one, the unique thing is actually the bowl is from Oaxaca. Here, uh, this one's pretty cool. <laughs> First of all, what is going on? <laughs> just a huge uh, piece of bread. I think it's, oh uh, yeah, I think it's just butter on there. And then uh, what's cool is you get the mussels and some chorizo in there and the mussels look really good. Look at this one. Oh yes, perfect. And I think what we're gonna do is maybe try to rehydrate it just a little bit with that juice. Oh yes, perfect. And maybe a little bit of chorizo on top. Oh, maybe not. Okay, round two, chorizo on top. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm. Epic. That is so delicious. First of all, the quality of muscle, so sweet. So delicious, perfectly cooked. Uh, you got a bit of that spicy uh, saltiness uh, from the chorizo and that sauce is epic. I think they put some wine in there with the fresh tomatoes. That is one to get. Yeah, get this dish. I can see why they gave us the massive piece of bread because that bread, you're gonna wanna use all of it to dip into there. That is, yeah, uh, this might not even be enough. Uh, and it's really gonna turn this dish into a real thoroughbred. You know, thoroughbred. Anyways, let's dip it into the sauce. Look at that, and just that epic sauce at the bottom. Oh, oh, oh yes, <laughs> look at that, looks so good. 
roll it up. And that's where it's at right there. This is a tostada and really cool, kind of like a West Coast tostada. You have all this smoked salmon. What I really love is just the epic amount of smoked salmon you have on there. Uh, some dill cream cheese, uh, some it looks like crispy capers. I'm gonna try to bite it without uh, destroying it too much. Perfectly fresh, that kind of cured salmon flavor, and then just the traditional ingredients that you put with smoked salmon on top just works so well. I like the crunch from the tostada, and I wasn't sure how uh, the kind of giant chunks of smoked salmon were going to be, but I actually liked it that way. Let's put some of this spice. Now, this is probably the wrong thing to put this sauce on just because I don't want to overpower the salmon too much, but you know, when in Rome, when in Vancouver. Mm. You know what? that kind of roasted chili flavor. I thought it was gonna overpower the salmon, but it works so well together. Let's go into this uh, bone marrow uh, ridiculous craziness. Uh, so this is called a sope on the bottom. So it's fried masa. I think these are some refried beans and then just this hunk of bone marrow. I mean, look at that. Oh, look at the juice, the bone marrow juice. I don't even know how to even eat this. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> just, just had a bone marrow accident. Oh, yes, look at that. I think that's it, yeah, that's it. That's the bone marrow there. That is literally just a sack full of bone marrow on top of this soap. And you can just tell the bone marrow grease has just kind of soaked into everything. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, let me try it by itself first, but I think this one might need a little bit of salsa. And let's give a little bit of bone marrow on top. Bone marrow is a bit pink. Okay, oh, there you go. Oh, that is just richness to the max. That is so rich, so buttery, so creamy. Soap is a little bit crispy on the bottom. I'm gonna add some of this red sauce. And you know what, just to spice it up a little bit, there you go, some of that sauce there. And add a little bit of salt to that also, on top of that. That's it right there. With that salt, with the kind of um, acidity from uh, the sauces I just added and a bit of that spiciness, that's where it really wakes the dish up because without that, it's just pure richness. But yeah, that bone marrow, you can't go wrong. Next are these carne asada tacos and I just absolutely love this. Look at that, the melty cheese on there. Oh, you can just kind of fold it together. Uh, just a bunch of steak. Pretty good, okay. Mm. Ah. Bunch of sauce. Put that sauce on there. And uh, let's take a bite. So, inside, look at inside. All of that kind of cheesy goodness. I think I see some, maybe some, reef, maybe not, maybe just some onions, some steak, and some cheese. And then on top, you can tell they put some more cheese so it just kind of crisps up on the grill. And then you're just gonna fold it and bite into this absolute masterpiece. Oh, yeah, get this one. That is so good. Oh, wow. The steak is nice and tender. The two tortillas are still fairly holding together. They're holding together very nicely, but then I think it's all about that kind of crispy cheese, uh, greasy layer that just kind of creates its own crust. Uh, but what I really like is, is once again, the tenderness of the beef is, is just all there. A little bit more of that sauce. You have to sauce it up, of course. And yes, yeah. Uh, actually, these sauces really not that spicy, but this one is. This one's fairly. You know, this one kind of adds to the flavor right there. So yeah, there you go. Oh wow! Once again, that's the bite. And I got a bit of the avocado in there too. Yeah, so many amazing flavors coming from there. And this might be some of the best carne asada I've had in Vancouver. Cheesesteak, baby. Yeah. Cheese I got food for you. Grab some napkins. I put two uh, forks in here for you. Oh, thank you. Of course. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you, buddy. You're you back, you bro. All right, I'm gonna roll on some orders. Awesome. Did you guys eat yet? Yeah. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. You want to email or text in your seat? Don't need it. Cool, Veronica. We'll give you a shout in a minute here. How are you doing? And you can start them, right? So you can get the wheels on. So. This is going to be a, a one that needs uh, napkins for sure. So, uh, oh yeah, I didn't even introduce this place yet. These are the guys from uh, Birria uh, Tacos from Topno Birria, and they have a special, uh, I think, kind of thing going on right now where they're making cheese steaks. Uh, what's cool is they incorporated some of the stuff from the Birria into the cheese uh, tapes, cheese steak, <laughs> not cheesecake. Well, uh, but yeah, cheese steaks are uh, kind of hard to find in Vancouver, uh, not that many. Uh, so we have a, yeah, you'll see, it's really, really cool. These are gonna be some kimchi tater tots. And there you go, all oh, with some birria on it too. Oh yes, perfect. So, uh, tater tots, uh, birria meat. I think the birria is probably gonna be, I think it's beef, must be beef. Uh, some kimchi on top and then the cheese whiz. Oh, that looks so cool. I'm gonna try to get a bite with everything on it. So here is the, oh, the epic bite. The tater tots are so saturated that they're kind of just breaking apart. Oh wow, yes, let's do that. Some of the kimchi on it. Oh, just a giant mess. Look how much meat they gave you. <laughs> it's so good. Yes, I don't think there's even a tater tot left in that bite. That's perfectly okay though. Oh yeah, mm. the meat, super juicy. And then you get that kind of cool little kimchi funk in there. I got a bit of the crunch uh, from the tater tots. You can taste that kind of cheese whiz um, in there. I'm not a big fan personally of cheese whiz unless you mix it with meat and then it becomes pretty good and that kimchi on there like i said i'm really i'm a, I am a big fan of that kimchi uh because it just adds just an extra layer and kind of like a unique flavor on top of that i don't know where they get their, their kimchi from but it's really high quality kimchi so mm, super delicious let's move on this is a cheesesteak here oh Look at that. So we asked for the large cheesesteak uh, with provolone and hot peppers. And this looks absolutely epic. Look at the cheesiness coming from that. Oh, it looks so good. And oh, look at that cheese crust too. Oh, there's an epic cheese crust on the side. So it's kind of like a cheese blanket, just uh, wrapping all these beautiful meat juices up and the bread. I think the bread they're using a roll from Fortuna Bakery, which is a, a pretty good Italian uh, bakery around here. Look at that, that just looks absolutely epic. You know what, you know what time it is? Stupid thumbnail. There you go, I had to do it, I had to do it. This is all large. Now, I will say it's probably compared to Philadelphia. Philadelphia will probably be like this big, but it's okay, it's a, it's a Canadian large. Whoa. So much crispiness. Those pickled peppers are so good in there. What I like is they've kind of crispified the meat a lot, and the cheese is also crispy. So it's almost, it almost, even without the birria sauce, it is like a birria kind of cheese. I'm gonna push some of those uh, pickled peppers to the front there, and I take another bite. That's really good. The provolone will make it a little bit drier, so you're not gonna get kind of the, the pasty kind of a sauciness of the cheese whiz, but then you just get that epic kind of crispy cheesiness that you don't get with the cheese whiz. What I really love is there's a spiciness from the pickled peppers. I would 100% get the pickled peppers with this because it just, it just completes it. And then that meat, very good quality, very crispy, and then that cheese just melts everywhere. This is technically for the next sandwich, but I will add a little bit of this various stock on there. Oh, there you go, perfect. Oops, and that bite, that's finally got the onion. So the onions are kind of nestled underneath. And once you get the onions in that bite, it just makes it a complete sandwich. Okay, let's go into this birria over here. This is the uh, one that you're supposed to dip in the birria. This, you can tell is the cheese whiz and right away with the cheese whiz, you're gonna get something that is just ridiculous. Oh my God, it's all just birria. 
And I think there's some cheese whiz and some normal cheese in there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the cheese whiz at the bottom. You know, throughout this uh, vlog, I've, I've tried to like, reg you know, I've tried to go on a couple of diets, and, you know, I try to eat healthy, and then these evil things like this come along and just ruin my progress. Because, I mean, come on, man, what, what is this? Let's get this monstrosity into my mouth. Ah, the things I do. Let's put some of this birria sauce. It's already really wet. So I'm gonna kind of put this on this side and put some of that birria sauce on there. This will require many, many napkins. Oh God, oh, ooh, that went right onto my finger. It's painful, but delicious. Oh God, <laughs> it's so good. For this one, make sure I have a defibrillator just in case, uh, because that is heavy. Juicy, delicious, cheesy. Look at all that meat. Look at all that cheese whiz on the bottom. The whole thing is saturated. You got the cheese crust. A little bit salty, not too salty though. Just epic and it's so soft. Uh, the bun somehow still retains, it still keeps the meat in. I don't know how. It reminds me a lot of like a beef dip. Uh, and yeah, that birria sauce is epic. Overall, which one do I like more? I think they're both equal. I think if you like saucier, and kind of juicy, like, you know, wetness. Uh, sounds a little bit weird. Moist, like the kids say. No, kids don't say that. Okay. <laughs> so, if you like kind of moisture. <laughs> Why are you sounding so weird? If you like moist meat, uh, get this one. Uh, if you like something that has a little bit of spice, uh, the kind of cheesy crustiness, uh, and a bit of a crunch, then I would get the other cheese thing. You call a tyrannical potato. A dictator? <laughs> dictator? Hey, dictator. And uh, with that terrible joke, we will end uh, this video. Uh, really cool uh, new joint in Vancouver. Uh, so awesome also to be back. So many cool, unique spots. And there are so many new other spots opening up in Vancouver. So I'm really excited to uh, do more of these uh, episodes, trying uh, new concepts, new restaurants. Uh, here. Uh, yeah, my plan for the next uh, video is I'm definitely gonna stay a little bit local and uh, maybe travel around uh, the west coast if I can. Depends on restrictions, of course. Maybe more Canadian destinations too. Uh, so do stay tuned for uh, those. So nice to be back. Uh, if you do enjoy our uh, videos, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the uh, bell icon so we can notify you of future videos. Let us know if you have any uh, other new recommendations uh, for Vancouver, new restaurants, or any other spots you want to recommend to us. I'm definitely willing to try it out. I will remain hungry. So anyways, we'll see you super soon and ciao. And I'm gonna do the weird thing where I just do this. There you go.